If you want to take the leap from home baker to professional, then this video is for you. If you don't want to, well, you find it interesting anyway. You know that Fabulous Pizza is, first of all, a channel for home bakers, even absolute beginners. Most of the content I share covers the fundamentals in particular, and I got a lot of troubleshooting videos for all the most common issues. I know for a fact that some people who watch my channel have gone from, yes, I have a little pizza making experience, to, hey, I feel confident my pizza game is strong right now. These are usually the ones who have attended a live session with me. And some of them have started a business and now sell pizza from their backyard. So again, this is your video if you want to make pizza for business, possibly in a professional environment. By the way, this is Sonata Pizza School in London, where I teach. If you want to know the dates of my future workshops, just leave a comment. But now, let's dive in. Let's get serious. First of all, we measure all the ingredients using baker's percentage. This is how we get serious in the first place. We need a different approach based on precision, on the ability to do every time the exact same thing and to have predictable results. So we switch to a formula which remains always the same, unlike recipes. I need 20 pizzas for tomorrow's workshop and I have calculated the doses with my advanced dough calculator you can buy it on my website. I'm using the in-house flour called indeed Sonata. It's the best you can find in the UK. I love it. The dough will be actually the same I have already shared with you. It's around 66% hydration. It's room temperature water. And I'm using instant dry yeast 0.5%. Finally, I'm using 2.2% salt. Lately, I have decreased the amount a bit because, you know, I became more aware of my daily intake. The important concept I want to point out here, there is no such thing as pizza dough for the house as opposed to professional or commercial. So forgive me if I did a bit of clickbait with the title of this video. The truth is, there is a pizza goal, meaning the kind of product you want to achieve and its characteristics. And there are the tools you will use, the oven in particular is the boss. I will show you that the dough I have always recommended for home baking works perfectly in a professional kitchen, which of course I already knew because I used it in the pizzeria for years, but today I can finally give you proof. Now I am going to the mixer, you give thumbs up to the video. Now that the dough is ready, we have two possible workflows and the choice is up to you. It's mostly a question of practicality. In terms of taste, there would be no relevant difference between the results obtained from the same total fermentation time. To be more specific, for the same time spent in the fridge and at room temperature. A noticeable difference could be the behavior of the dough balls if we don't manage them correctly and I will explain in a minute. In both cases, I had to let it rest on the worktop for at least half an hour, up to an hour. Then, first option, I can put it in the fridge overnight so it will ferment in bulk, and tomorrow take it back to room temperature for half an hour or so. At that point, I would split the doubles and let them rise for at least a couple of hours. Even three or four are fine if your room temperature is relatively low, let's say below 20 Celsius. Or if your flour is a bit unbalanced and it takes longer for the gluten to loosen up a bit. This is what I meant when I said that we had to manage doubles correctly. 
If we do a long bulk fermentation and we roll the doubles later, then we must let them rise long enough for them to become nice and stretchy. Get your ideal consistency of the doubles. Some trial and error will be necessary. I can only give some clue here. In my case, I want to split this dough today. So in 30 to 6 minutes from now, I will make my 20 doubles. Then they will have to rest before I put them in the fridge. I, I need the fermentation to kick off because when they go in at around 3 degrees Celsius, all the fermentation processes will slow down remarkably, especially compared to what happens at home. Tomorrow, when I come back to do all my prep, I will assess how the doubles are doing and take them out of the fridge at some point. Again, a couple of hours is a rule of thumb. If for any reason they blew up in the fridge and they are on the road to over fermentation, then I will leave them inside and work with them straight from the fridge. Although this is an extreme measure for an extreme scenario, it's not too common to be honest. It comes maybe from a malfunction of the refrigerator or who knows, maybe we used too much yeast by mistake. But it's still part of doubles management. We need to be ready for whatever possibility. Okay, after around one hour, more or less, it's time to split the doubles. I'll make 20 of them, 280 degrees each. 280 grams each, in pure Neapolitan style. When I cut them, I will store them in these containers. Pretty useful. Two hundred to what? And it's time to bake. These are the doubles. They've been out of the fridge for one hour more or less. My friend Semolina. And now we wait. Mm -hmm. 